The universe is a magical creation that humankind cannot fully fathom. Our lives on Earth is a mystery that presents us with more questions than answers. Why the extremes of health and illness, ease and hardships? When one has a heart that is failing you, these questions press hard on you. Along with a quest for a new heart, one is also looking for spiritual answers. Life is about the soul, but also the body. Here we're playing chess. It reminds me of a poet. It is all a checkerboard of nights and days hmm. where destiny with men for pieces plays. Heather and the other moves and mates and slays and one by one back in the closet lays. Yes, it's um, yeah, it's all it's all a chess game. Talking about life, but life is a journey full of surprises. God, the Creator, has put a heavy burden on, on our human beings. When you can have a look about life, there are too many questions that most of the people ask, why this is happening, why this is happening to me, and all that stuff. Why do you think your heart is perished? Why did God allow that to happen? No one knows exactly why God is doing this. Maybe you will find out later on. Do you get cross with God? Yeah, as a church goer, I don't have that kind of a mind. I don't, I'm not cross because I know that maybe he is working on something. I know that, that's why I'm saying that. I can't say that what he's doing now to me, maybe I will see it later on. We can say that life is unfair because there are people in life that are fortunate, there are people in life that are not. Then there is a question for those who are not fortunate, why are these things happening to me? why other people are having a nice, healthy life, while I'm having this miserable, lonely, penniless life. Well, how do you feel about death? Are you afraid of death? Then when you are near God or you are born again, when it comes to death, you don't fear that you know that you're going straight to heaven. But how sure are you that, that if you die one day, that you go to heaven? There's no, uh, there's no expect when it comes to that, because there are a lot of questions and question marks about God, even God how God created uh, the world or the, the earth. We are people as we are in spirit but in mortal body. The mortal body will always also speak to yourself. 
that I'm also there. That part we can't leave. If you have Jesus, then you will find joy and happiness. Even if you have, you are penniless, then, but there will be that joy. And if you can also include a person that saying that, yes, I do have that joy. That's what I'm saying, that if you want to be successful in life, you must be close to God and you will have that joy. That joy will always be there and also that mortal body will always be there. Both of these bodies are also con are, are contradictive. I actually can't stop thinking about it. It's, mm. it, it's, uh, it, it's something opening a, a, a chapter, a chapter, a new chapter in my life. Mm. Buyo is becoming a chapter in my life. very important for me to be in this room today and for me this is what the series is all about a list of angels the donor family this room is dedicated to the first heart donor Denise Darfel this is uh, the most amazing heart in the world the heart of Denise Darfel that was transplanted in Wiskanski's body and he survived for 18 days. When I was a photo of a kid, was me wrong, but I like say, here is in Bies, Afghanimste mense in South Africa. Had he in a world for two of that? Oh, yes, I was a world skibist, eh? I was in a world for. Yeah, world's first transplant 50 years ago, commemorated on the Belgium's first silver coin. Yeah. As a prata coin and a net five thousand gulden. Schrikkelijk baie dankie. 3 December 1997. Sinds 8 en 8 op is Belgium. België. Ja, kan je geloven. Zelfs ook die hele wereld hulle vergeet om net nooit. about you from all corners of medicine and you so well known thank you for talking to me today thank you Jan. that's a very generous uh, introduction and i hope uh, it all lives up uh, to what you've heard professor chris barnard said the heart is just a pump do you believe it well, the heart is not just a pump. Um, the heart is a very complex organ and its functions extend far beyond being a conduit to get blood to perfuse uh, the peripheral organ. Firstly, the heart has complexity both in its structural design and in its performance. And if you look at the movements that it makes when it contracts in three dimensions, it makes these ringing motions with each contraction. And in fact, if you were to dissect the heart and look at the muscle fibers running within uh, the myocardium, you'll see that they are arranged in different orientations in the longitudinal, radial, and circumferential directions therefore allowing um, for these uh, complex uh, twisting um, or torsional uh, movements of the heart. Furthermore, the heart has a membrane around it which is uh, crucial 
both in uh, creating an environment that is uh, distinct from others in the body so that it's got its own immune system, uh, which is different. The membrane, uh, furthermore, prevents uh, infections from other parts of the body and is also important uh, in the developing heart uh, for creating boundaries and of course also influences uh, the hemodynamics uh, within the heart in terms of chamber pressures and the flow uh, of blood. But ultimately the heart has uh, a very dynamic microenvironment where you have constant renewal and you have uh, different kinds of cells that contribute uh, to very complex functions. So the heart is a very uh, fascinating and complex organ whose functions uh, go beyond just uh, its role uh, in beating and serving uh, as a pump. Mr. Wuyo Fongotka is one of our patients in the cardiac clinic who we've been following since 2017. He has a diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy with a very advanced phenotype and we're currently working him up for possible orthotopic uh, cardiac transplantation. Um, and he is on uh, optimal medical therapy and still fairly symptomatic. Um, and today uh, is visiting the clinic for a follow-up clinic for a follow-up visit. Thank you, Professor, for uh, introducing him. We are. How do you feel about the possibility of having a heart transplant? Yeah, at first I won't lie. I wouldn't lie. It was not an easy decision to take. Because we always, for an example, most of us, we always thinking about death and that process. Is it going to be successful or not? Then it's up to you when you want to take, you go for it or not. But at first, truly really speaking, I didn't want to go for it until I go for the counseling. Then they explain to me and show me another patient that they, they've been through the situation that I'm into now. Then I ended up convinced. Then that's where I started to agree with him that I'm gonna take the transplant. It's a life-altering experience uh, for many patients uh, and there are deep personal inclinations but also deep cultural beliefs, uh, social uh, beliefs and religious beliefs that uh, influence how individuals uh, think about transplantation and the idea of having somebody else's heart um, inside your body. Uh, but it's also uh, preparing them for the journey ahead. Uh, it's a very big operation that the patients uh, have to go through uh, and people have to be prepared uh, not just uh, for that but um, a lifelong change in um, living uh, with a condition that requires you to take medication to prevent uh, rejection, to make sure that you don't develop uh, a new form of heart disease uh, in the new heart. Is it not hot enough? Why don't they? Is it all right? 
is so right. You know, Julio, what I admire so much about you, that you are working full time, that you're not saying, I can't work because of your, your, your heart disease. As you said that you've seen me that I'm strong. I was not strong at first. I was very, very weak. I couldn't sometimes even to finish up the, the whole week. It was not easy for me. Do you, are you sometimes scared, afraid? Then the only feeling I had, it, I had before, it was what kind of heart that is gonna be installed in me? What if this person, maybe, he was maybe a road person? People they are always thinking in this way that, what if I do get a, a heart of a arrogant maybe person? Then I will also be, I will also be like that as well. Yeah, it's always a, a kind of an attitude to everyone that will undergo this kind of transaction. Mm. To get this kind of a disease, it was something shocking to me. To be in and out to GPs for sickness and all that stuff, I never been to that kind of a situation. I never got sick in my life because I was energetic before I got this kind of illness. I was very, very energetic. A sportman used to go to the gym and all that stuff. I do a, a weightlifting for quite a long time until I decided now I want to pursue myself as a bodybuilder, but I didn't make it. Then after the weightlifting, then I joined the, the, in the, the basketball, then I played basketball, and I settled there. If I look at your face, if I look at your eyes, I believe that there's a book in you, a story to be told. And I want you to write a paragraph every week about your life. And then every time I see you, we will read it together and we will discuss it. We will discuss how the book must go until the heart transplant is going to happen. I will ask you to be part of it as well. I'm looking forward to walk this journey with you. Cardiomyopathy in sub-Saharan Africa is a disease of the young uh, where the disease tends to be familial. Males are much more commonly affected uh, than women and um, the diseases uh, tend to be much more severe uh, and much more common um, in uh, younger patients. In most parts of the world, cardiovascular disease, with the exception of congenital heart disease, is largely a problem that afflicts the elderly. Whereas in sub-Saharan Africa, those with heart failure and most other forms of cardiovascular disease tend to be young. And so the impact on societies and the economies of these societies is enormous because those with heart disease are often the ones who can contribute the most to the economies of uh, countries uh, still uh, on the rise. And that's really been the interest to see if we can understand better the causes of these diseases. Don't you think uh, the soul perhaps is settled in the heart? Indeed, uh, so throughout the ages, because of its centrality to life, 
the heart has been afforded culturally, in folklore, in uh, how people understand uh, the world, uh, a far greater status than most other organs are uh, in the body. And people have felt that the soul probably resides in the heart or the conscience, those things that give us our sense of personhood, distinguish us from others, and also determine our behavior and our understanding of the moral world and why we choose to do what's right. Often comes from impulses coming from within our hearts. And, um, and I think that what this reflects is our understanding of the importance uh, of the heart to life. Uh, on this day, on the third of of the 23rd of Friday 2019, I feel much better. In fact, the, in fact, day by day, I experience an improvement. My wish is to get better or be healed without undergoing transplant. I have put my trust on my medication that can make this wish come true. Praying to God, the Creator, to make this possible and happening. Because for a person to go for a transplant, it is a way of not having a choice, or that is the only option you have, which means it's, it's kind of like a, a last resort you have. Good if it has come to that point.